Hi everybody, welcome very much to match number 3 out of a best of 5 counting for energy slap fast playoff first round and it's between Papi Po in the color red as the Byzantines versus Anaten on the color blue playing as the Ayubit. The map is good old Dry Arabia and it's a pleasure to have you here with me. Thank you very much for watching, your support is greatly appreciated. Leave a like and subscribe, use the links down below to find me, Puppy Paw, and the host stream live on Twitch as well. Other than that, let's talk about the matchup. First, it's match number 3, so two matches were already played, and if you watched the videos before, you know what's the story of the match so far of the set. If you don't know, pause the videos and I will tell you real quick, pause this video, go watch them. You done so, you back, okay, welcome back, so... Papipo won one game, and Nutan won another game. So it's 1-1, one, one, so still at least two more games to play here between these two players. And right now, the Byzantines versus the Ayubids. So the Byzantines actually have been proving that they are a very good civilization to counter fast castle strategies. Why? Because they can produce energies... <laughs> <laughs> they can produce units faster because of the cistern um, bonus. They can get that second cistern basically for free or literally for free. So then they can boost the production of units up to 40%. And they can get some free units as well. So they, they don't need to invest so much into feudal aggression. And then they can also get the RAM research upgrade faster as well because of the cisterns right and the, they can basically just attack earlier without investing so much in comparison to other units so they slowly but surely revealing themselves to be the best civilization to counter fast castle strategies delhi as well delhi is really good at counter fast castle as well but the byzantine is like you don't need to invest so much right now, Anatend might be knowing this, Anatend might know that his fast castle strat will not work, and he might look to play Feudal Age. He's going aging up with a military wing reinforcement, getting that free Desert Raider, and Grand Winery coming in for Puppy Paw to get extra oil. Very classic, Puppy Paw was the one to, at least that I saw, was the first one that I saw, starting this trend of opening with an olive grove and then usually players now go to two four olive groves in the feudal age just to have extra oil and it allows you to get at least four um, units for pack packs of units from the mercenary house which is actually a lot of it's so free man so many free resources right so will be a attempt, I think, from Puppy Paw to catch an attend off guard and end the game or really do a lot of damage before they age up. Remember that then an attend, if they age up with the culture with the economical wing growth, they'll get eight free villagers. So Puppy Paw needs to do a lot of damage before that happens. Or right after that happens. Right? So Grand Winery going up with only two villagers. Tower on the berries to shoo away the Desert Raider. And it then reaches the Feudal Age. Desert Raider comes out. And let's see where they go. Two olive groves so far for Papi Paw. I think now he's gathering wood to make more units. Arrow slits on the tower. Desert Raider is there. And then I think he's going to the Castle Age. He has three builds on wood though. But no, uh, it's for the tower. Then other than that, nothing else. Barracks coming in for the Puppy Paw. Some, some Limitane, Limitane, Limitane. Coming out. Desert Raider can't attack. He could go to the wood line though, but it's very close to the town center, so he might be sniped. They're attacking the Grand Winery, yes. Good target. 
<laughs> right, guys? And then he's close to the castle edge. He's going in. Puppy Po went for wheelbarrow in the, the barracks with the mercenary house. But Anathan is really close. He, he can go to the fast one, or he can wait and get those eight villagers. I think that's best, but if you are afraid that your enemy is going to strike you, I think you go that one. The advancement, right? And he's going with a longbow contract, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's a javelin thrower contract. To counter archers that the enemy might lose. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Anathan is going with the um, normal edge up. Here we go. Receiving eight free villagers, because why not? Right. More oil coming in from Puppy Paw. Three limitane, limit nine, limitane in the front of the battle. Four javelin throwers will be arriving soon as well. The tower is there though. Do we have a blacksmith here for the Karosiphon? No, no blacksmith because it was invested at least two olive groves, which is 120 wood. We're all walking around with the scout. Looking for an angle to attack. Archers coming in next to deal with the Limitane, Limitane, Limitane. But Jalen Throwers will cover that up. Spearman here looking to do some damage, but not really. Not a lot of space to do so. Desert Raider almost getting a villager here. I don't think you will be able to. So, Papipo is not uh, being too aggressive. He's now going to the castle edge himself. He has two cisterns. Very far away from the third one. I think he just wants to go castle as soon as possible. To contest some relics. Get uh, units to counter the armored units, right? He has a lot of oil. Not using it. Well, let's say he has zero people on oil. He doesn't. Right? I think that's, that needs to be fixed. Because you don't have an oil resource, you only have the berries and the olive groves. And the oil is secondary resource, so I think the game will never recognize that you have people of, on oil because you don't have people on oil. You don't have, your villagers don't go to oil, they go to berries or olive groves, right? And it then reaches the castle age. And the, wait, where there are the eight free villagers? The, taking it, oh, there you go. <laughs> Everybody's speaking at the same time, it was funny. Walls coming in. Spearman, Limitanae. And javelin, wait, where is the other javelin thrower? Is they, they can get in groups of four. Uh, he, no, that's a spearman. Maybe he, 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 he's in the base defending or something? Archers. Man, nah, nah. The, the javs are over there. The javs are there. Villager from Puppy Paw under stress. Let me go. And UH begins for uh, Puppy Paw. The Golden Horde Tower activated. He's also researching the Lebronax. A blacksmith is coming in for Anatend. Anatend, yeah, is eight villagers ahead. Actually, wait, it should be more because he killed one. Right? No, he's nine villagers ahead, yeah. Okay, so he killed one, he's nine villagers ahead. That's actually a lot. Nice job. Oh, uh, they almost got one villager there. So, oh, Anathan being so annoying with the Desert Raider, bro. He, sh he should have at least another one. There we go. Because every two minutes he spawns one, right? More Jeff Throwers. And the Jeff Throwers also counter the Desert Raiders because they are ranged as well. And the Jeff Throwers, they counter everything that is ranged. Does it matter if it's light, heavy, cav, infantry? 
anything. Jab throwers with the upgrade now doing 10 damage plus 8. What is everything that Anatan has? So if Puppy Paw is able to mass a good number of jab throwers, he can kill everything. Scout going down to nice. But people, very importantly, keeping Anatan in his own base. Because usually what happens with Ayubit is they age up, and then they harass you, they get relics, but no, Anatan is now forced to defend. So very good press for here, for Puppy Paw, right? There we go, more units coming through. Puppy Paw with almost double the units of Anatan. Anatan is now building one Dervish. He wants, the, he wants those relics. And where is the monk? There we go. Monk carrying the relic back into the oil machine. I wonder how they get oil from the relics. Maybe people get inspired. They work better. They are vibing in a higher frequency and vibration because of the relic. So they just... They work better. They squeeze more oil out of the, 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 the olives. Right? Or maybe the relic makes the olives grow fatter and bigger, so they have more oil to be squeezed at. Right? It's mysteries. Oh! Camel Lancer will take care of these Jaff Throwers. We probably will lose four Jaff Throwers. Oh, they can't snipe the Dervish, though. We probably should have no vision on... Ah! Dervish comes in! But I don't think it's enough damage. For the jab from the jab throwers, they take a charge, and yeah, the dervish actually they move really fast. It's really good. But more units arrive here for Papi Paw. He grabs another relic as well, which is down there. Oh, that's good. That was like super far away. But more units also arriving from Anatan. A whole army of archers, twenty-three archers. Anatan also grabs one relic for himself. Wait, that camel is walking a bit weird. Like his legs are too spread out. That's fine. See, this camel doesn't walk like that. Right. Maybe to carry the weight of the relic, he needs to spread the legs to be more sustainable. If <laughs> Here we go. And it then walks up. But Puppy Paw has enough to defend, I think. But remember that the Ubits, they can build Siege on the field. Sultan's Mam Mamluks. Coming in. Infantry gains 25% damage and 25% movement speed for 10 seconds after killing a unit. That's really good. Running in guards working as a front line. Working well. Jeff throwers. Deleting the archers and crossbows. From Puppy Paw. Nice. Okay, it's time to delete the back line. 19 Jeff Throwers. That's a lot. Let's go for income per minute here, guys. Oh, good reaction time. Because you couldn't kill one because the other dervish will be healing it. Right? Views are chasing? Views want to body block them. Do they have no. There is if there is no system here, if there was system, they could pop up Akritoi defense. Right? And just delete them. Oh Javan, bro, they are two shotting the camel lancers. Oh, because no range defense. Right. Because they have four ranged. The Javs do 11 damage. So, yeah. Oh! Village is going down here. Desert Raider, super annoying. But the people killed four units, lost two. So, they're still behind in Vils. But they have oil, they have three relics. Uh, making more oil. So, I think they're fine. Ooh, they're gonna find so many. Oh no, that's great for Puppy Paw. Horrible for Anatan. Losing more Vils. They will lose more. Right. 
And the puppy boys are over! And a tent. Killed 8 villagers, so the bonus from aging up is not present for Anaten. Losing 9 villagers. Burning down. But people now burning down infrastructure. Okay. Everything going smoothly now. The pawn doesn't have a lot of upgrades though. He's using all of his resources into units. Manganel on the field and another one being built. So two Manganels will be present for Anatan. That will actually delay the push of Papipo because he has 18 um, javelin throwers. So that will not really do well into the Manganel. Right? More damage here. Villagers taking a lot of damage. 12 villagers killed so far. Papipo is now ahead economically speaking. And also militarily, but the Manganels doing good work here. Vergen guards working very well too. They can all oh, because Anatan has no front line. I didn't realize that Anatan had no front line, so the Vergen guards own the game. GG gets called. Bobby Pot 2, Anatan 1. Let's go to game number 4.